What if Emirates never ordered the Airbus A380? This has been in my mind for some time now, and I've decided to make a video today exploring what potentially this could have meant for Airbus, the A380 program, Emirates, and as well other things like how Boeing may have benefited from this. The A380 is the largest passenger plane in the skies today and is widely recognized from its four engines and the full double-decker figure, a feature that the 747 is shy of. The program has copped a lot of criticism not only from me but also a number of others. However, how much more would it have been criticized if Emirates never ordered the A380? To me, it'd be a considerable amount. This A380 resulted in multiple airports having to upgrade existing facilities, which cost billions all up. So if Emirates weren't operating this A380, I almost feel like the upgrade of specific airports may have never happened. When it comes to the program overall, it's important to analyze the orders. Emirates are the largest operators of the Airbus A380, with around 101 delivered so far. They have 162 firm orders for the aircraft as well, with just over half being delivered to the airline. As for the other airlines, that amount is far less, but for some still considerable when you're thinking of the actual size of the aircraft and what it can do. As for other airlines, there will be a screenshot to detail all customers and airlines who have actually collapsed and cancelled their orders. We'll begin with Air France, who have 10, ANA, or All Nippon Airways, who have 3 of the A380s on order, and are the only other carrier likely to be receiving the aircraft, bar Emirates. Asiana Airlines have 6, British Airways with 12, China Southern Airlines have 5, 10 for Etihad, 10 for Korean, 14 for Lufthansa, 6 for Malaysian Airlines, 12 for Qantas, who do have a further 8 on order, but those haven't actually been delivered to them, Qatar with 9, and Singapore with 21. However, it's worth mentioning, Singapore are receiving new A380s as we speak, and have removed their first A380, registration 9V-SKA, from their fleet altogether. I believe 9V-SKB, their second one, is also being removed. Virgin Atlantic, our final one, who had an order for 6 of the A380s, and they were scheduled to enter into service this year, however, that has never eventuated. So that's 222 A380s delivered. Let's remove straight away 101 from Emirates, and that's 121 A380s delivered so far. Would this impact the A380 program? For me, it'd be a yes, but I'd be keen to hear your opinions on this. As someone mentioned in a live stream of mine, Emirates seem to have a huge impact in aircraft manufacturers and know that because of their previous large number of orders for specific aircraft, the likes of Airbus and Boeing are going to come to them if a particular program is in need of reviving. In this case, this actually happened with the Airbus A380. It was rumored that Airbus would have to st almost stop production of their flagship aircraft if a new order was not received in the coming months. And this is still on top of all of the existing orders from Emirates, which is quite a considerable amount as we mentioned. It's around the number of 161 now, but it was around 140 previously. Airbus travelled around the world on trade missions with still no success. Emirates, however, came to the rescue, sealing a deal for 36 more of them. Since then, they affirmed the order for half, and if they confirm the last 18, will keep the program alive well into the late 2020s, which is a huge benefit for Airbus and something they've been looking at for a very long time. If this order didn't happen though, what would have happened with Emirates? Despite having no A380s at the disposal, obviously another aircraft would have been needed. In terms of candidates, there isn't necessarily one that competes directly with the A380. You could say the 7478 Intercontinental is as close as you can get, but is it something they would actually go for? More importantly, if Emirates actually ordered the 7478, could that have sparked more interest in the aircraft itself and maybe lured airlines away from the A380 and made the 7478 passenger version an even bigger success? That's a question I simply cannot answer for sure, but it's certainly something that could have unfolded. Continuing on with the 7478 and Emirates, it's time to analyze the two aircraft and their specs. Because while they are both from looks, and engine count pretty much the same, compared to let's say an A320 and a Dreamlifter, the specs are an important aspect to determining how many more the airline would need, or how many less. The A380 can typically seat around 489 passengers in a long haul configuration, 517 in a long range configuration, and 615 in a two class configuration, which 
No airlines are doing at this stage, and it's not really what the A380 was made for, but it's still an interesting point to discuss. Taking a look at the 7478, this aircraft can fit 410 passengers in a three-class configuration, which is less than the A380. To me, this would mean Emirates would need to essentially order more of the 7478s if they were determining their order number based purely on the passenger count. As we know, airlines order aircraft for different reasons. Some of them will opt for an aircraft purely out of range. They will then order a larger amount of them because for the most part, um, airplanes that have a small capacity will have the longer range. This is the case with, let's say, the new 777X series. The Dash 8 variant has the longer range but is the shorter airplane and can't hold as many. So some airlines will opt for the Dash 8 and Dash 9 of the 777 family purely because, one, they want that added range and then they want the Dash 9 because they need it for capacity purposes. This might be the case with Emirates ordering the 747. They could either opt really is the same case with Emirates. They may have opted for the 7478 purely because it's as close as they could get at the time to, let's say, an A380. It does have quite a smaller range comparing it to the A380, which would mean it'd be likely they were also just going off size. So they would probably have to make up for the loss of the A380 with more 7478 orders. That's what I'm trying to get at. Um, in the raw recording of this, I've pretty much messed up every single sentence, so hopefully I can string together a nice piece of voice recording for you all that makes sense. If, if I've rambled on just then, I apologize for that. It's difficult to actually determine which aircraft would have been best for them, because it isn't as simple as, let's say, picking a medium-sized aircraft like the A330neo and choosing a replacement. And while I mentioned the 7478, you just really don't know, because I don't know what the airline's thinking, this is just my opinion. An option that could have been made available to the airline if they del were delivered earlier would have been the 777X series as we briefly touched on before. While Emirates have an order already for the 777-8 and 777-9, the proposed 777-10 could have been a fantastic option for the airline. This choice would be purely based on the capacity as it's the closest Emirates would have gotten to the A380's capacity. In terms of range, the 777-10 would certainly not be the best option. Something like the Dash 8 could have been good for range, and that has that is what Emirates have opted for. When it comes to alternate aircraft from Airbus, there is nothing that Airbus have come up with that is close to the A380, and especially in the time when the A380 was ordered by airlines and Emirates. Nowadays, the A350 series specifically the A350-1000, could have been an option for the airline, but it still brings up the key point that Emirates would have therefore gone years without having this gigantic double-decker aircraft in their fleet, and they would have needed an aircraft without a doubt to be doing something like the A380, or the airline simply would not have grown as fast. Now, I'm not saying the airline could not have survived without the A380 at all. I do believe they could have. It's just how fast the airline is growing. The A380 seems essential to their growth. The final point I want to discuss in this video is the overall impact it would have had on the A380 program. We did briefly touch on it earlier in the video, but personally I think if Emirates removed their order for the A380, then some airlines may have either ditched the A380 or simply just followed Emirates in ordering the same aircraft together. And this is why I was discussing the 7478 could have been a very big success if Emirates opted for it. I think the carriers that would have followed Emirates would probably be the Middle Eastern carriers like Qatar and Etihad, as they are all competing with each other. As for the criticism, I feel it'd be there just more dominant, and whether Airbus could have kept the aircraft production alive until 2018, and another thing that is debatable is the introduction of the A380+. Overall, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. If Emirates hadn't ordered the A380, which aircraft would have they gone for? Feel free to let me know in the comment section below, as well as any other opinions you have. I truly appreciate all your support. If you want to see more of these videos, uh, what if scenarios, and just discussing and analyzing what could have happened, how the airline, aircraft, and so on, passengers would have benefited, the negatives, just let me know in the comment section below as well. Different airlines, different scenarios, I'm more than happy to write down and take into account. If you did enjoy this new sort of video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I also really appreciate it if you have made it this far in the video. Thank you very much, and I will see you all in my next one. Peace. Race all of these broken dreams and flight. And we'll fly.